You may have noticed that I'm doing the exact same thing in the exact same clothes, the exact same time, in the exact same pattern that I was doing them on the previous episode. Am I taking advantage of the algorithm? No, because I don't know what the algorithm is. What I do know is, is I make 15 minute videos so you guys won't get bored of watching me do stuff. So, sue me. Anyway, welcome back to Town Creek ATV Part 2 of the Archipat Rebuild. Here we're going to start with the bumper and get as far as we get. So, I got to finish bolting this bumper up. Uh, I got to take the top part back off. Of course, uh, and it's got reflectors, snazzy. Uh, and put the rest of the bolts back in and kind of get them tight, as tight as possible. Uh, and then um, at some point, get the fair lead off the original bumper, the pre-bumper, and try and get this thing finished up. We we're also gonna do an oil change on it. And I want to put some wheel spaces on it. I'll explain why, bear with me, okay? So let's get the bumper put back on completely, get it bolted up nice and tight, and then move on to the more important stuff. Okay? Okay, thanks. Whatever provision was down there to hold the bottom bolt holes is toast. Completely and utterly gone. So, where's my 10 mil? Again. So there it is. I'm making it harder and harder for myself to put that fair lead on. I guess I'm not terribly worried about it, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, this hardware is actually really nice. It's uh, It's got a square head on it right so of course it looks good on the outside um, but it'll hold itself while you're trying to tighten it so it's pretty nice Dork. Dork. that's ridiculous honestly <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous look at this would you just look at it look at it Absolutely ridiculous. Acts as a fender holder too, which is really cool. Now it's probably low, you know, honestly, but realistically, I'm limited to my adjustment abilities because I am working with a machine that was, for lack of a better term, wrecked. So I'm doing the best thing of what I got. Here's the thing: headlights shine right out, no problem. Okay, highs and lows, no problem. Uh, this has got plenty of room for a fog light if I ever want to run one. I could run a couple lights up here, a couple lights up here. You know, I could make it really good or ish better. So, um, let's carry on, I reckon. Let me go ahead and torque down the these things. Yeah, see that? I want to start just fine. Why are you being a turd? How hard was that? Why did you make it so difficult? That's it. She's alive again. Well, what do you think? Be honest. You can tell me. It's beefier than it has to be. That's for sure. There is no question about that. But, let's be honest here. <laughs> better than the broken one <laughs> so we'll pause here hydrate and we're gonna do oil change little spacers 
I'll explain to you why we're doing that when I get there. Clean up a little bit first. Remember how I said about the CVT cover? There's the open hole. Luckily, I've had it parked away from the rain and hurricane since it's been open, so it hasn't actually had any water intrusion. Now, bought everything I need for it, the gaskets, the plate, everything, because you know if I'm already spending this much money to fix this vehicle, let's do it the right way. So we got these two screws here, and then obviously go. Don't go there, apparently. Huh, I never thought there were gonna be screws there. Okay, so, gasket onto the vent, the air intake, of course. This goes onto here. That's where those screws came in, I think. That's a different bit. That's perfect. Yeah, that looks so good. So, looks much better, right? Okay. Now there's a vent, or the actual filter, excuse me. Actually goes between that screen uh, and the plastic, so I gotta take that back off. Which is fine, just gave it a little tap. No problem. So we tap those holes out. I'm gonna put the screws back in. I'm gonna get this filter element put back in place so it sucks in fresh air, no bugs. You know, we don't, I got dragonflies here where I'm at. Don't need to suck a dragonfly into the vent, that'd be smelly. trick it's going to be. Okay, let's get that gasket back on there. Okay. So now with all that being done, I got to change the oil on it. I don't think it's been changed uh, since I sold it to my brother. So I'm positive that it needs a service. Uh, so we'll do the oil change, and while I have it up on the jacks, uh, we'll go ahead and slap the spacers on, see how they look. I gotta hope I have the right socket for these. I think I do. Uh, I don't think I'm on the toolbox, I don't remember. But either way. I'm gonna push you guys down, because I gotta figure out where the drain plug is on this thing, because it's also covered in mud. I can't see anything, so I don't know. Where it is, the filter, of course, and the dipstick are between the two front seats behind that removable panel and the center console area. So I got that. That's not a problem. Need to figure out where the drain plug is. So let me figure that out. It's right here. So that is obviously the uh, rear drive shaft, um, or the drive shaft really going to the transfer case to the front of the motor. And that is the drain plug right there. So let's get that draining into an OSHA approved pan and. Uh, definitely going to recycle that in the appropriate way and then filter as I was telling you guys so if you're in the of the vehicle here center console back here dipstick please don't judge the dirt dipstick filter and change the oil especially if it hasn't been changed in five years of course you change the filter as well so let's get that going and then we'll move on to the more fun parts Seventeen millimeter on the drain plug there. Oh, it's actually pretty clean. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's soft. Uh, it's clean. But there again, it hasn't been changed in five years, but 
you know, oil doesn't lose viscosity. It's the filter elements uh, and just general age that concerns me. Uh, so I always try to change on my machines at least once a year uh, or every, you know, call it 100 hours or so. Y'all. Look at that oil. It's like maple syrup. Look at that. Granted, it wasn't really driven that much the time period he had it, but there again, just Of how clean that oil is, I'm just going to take the oil from that old filter, kind of pre lube a new one, of course, lube up the oil seal. Now I can figure out the capacity. Now I'll just figure out the capacity and uh, we'll pop it off there. So I'll be right back with you. Alright, so it's just about three quarts of oil. So that's exactly what I have actually. So we're going to go ahead and use all three quarts since this is technically a service fill, not a dry fill. We're going to go ahead and use all three quarts and then we'll start it, let it run, cut it off, check it. You know the drill. The only oil I will ever use is Alvaline 10W40 for wet clutch. They were gonna have hub damage. <sighs> Ooh, it had already. How abuse this thing's taken. I'm positive I'm gonna need it now. It would have had hub damage already, but that's it's so solid, man. Two it's inch spacers. I always hated how skinny, and I know this is supposed to be a trail, right? So like 54 inches or something like that. I've just always hated how skinny it is. I don't like the skinny ones. I want to stick out a little further. Now you have two options on this, all right? You can do a long travel kit, sand axles, all that kind of stuff. But that's like three grand, I think, is what I saw. 2500 something like that, for a long travel kit, uh, long arm. I'm not paying that for this machine. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do it. So, we're gonna do it the wrong way. Yep. There's yeah, not a lot of fit on that. Not a lot of fit on that at all. I may have to return these and get a one inch. Just uh, here, take a little look. There's no, no threads on that. That does not seem safe at all. So I may have to go down to a one inch. I just, I mean, unless I put longer studs in it, you know, I could put longer studs in it, I guess. But that does not have a lot of thread at all. I mean, it, it went like four or five turns and then it was locked in. 
I don't know. I want to see what it looks like. We're going to send it. I'll probably wind up taking them back off, honestly, and uh, putting them back the way they were. But I'm just genuinely curious and just kind of want to see what they look like. side and then I'll pick you back up when I get that done because you've just some wasp do one so what my wasp do two there we go got the spacers on it she's all out pushed out just a little bit it doesn't look quite as dainty got the new bumper on it that is a mean picture right there I need to use that as a thumbnail holy crap that's awesome got all the body panels lined back up and all she needs now is new shoes something a little less aggressive and because it's so stinking fast new shoes and a good bath and maybe we'll see about turning these shocks up some give a little more ground clearance but for now that's going to do it for part two of the Articat build stick around part three will be coming out soon hopefully within the next month or so uh or the next couple weeks uh just gotta get some tires for it take them to the tire shop so all that being said now, she's going to go back to her parking spot uh, until I get some tires for it because I don't want to run down the street with these. I really don't. It's, it's rough. So we'll see you all then. Peace.